Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wa al-ardu wa al-kibari fa'abayna an yahmanaha wa shfaqna minha that we showed this trust, this amana to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. These are the great creations of Allah. The Mufassirun say that these are the the makhluqat al-ibam, these vast creations of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered them and the ulama differ on what that means. Some say that uh, that it's a, a figurative sense and a figurative sense to show what it means. And others say that it has a, a meaning uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but it, it should be understood like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He gave this amana to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, and they refused it. And then, ashfaqna minha, ishfaq is to, to have like awe or fear of something. And, 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 wahmala insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the human being carried it. He took on this thing. And the Mufassirun, some say Adam alayhi salam, some say just the human being took this upon himself. And some of the Mufassirun, they say that what it means is that that we had a choice in this, that there, there was actual choice and, and we chose and now we have the responsibility of that choice. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, that the human being is oft oppressing, he oppresses himself and others, uh, and that he's also uh, ignorant, and, and this is not an ignorant, it's an ignorant that, that it's a hyperbolic form, in other words, extremely ignorant. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then, and then uses what the grammarians call them al aqiba or sarura. It's, it's, it's not a, uh, a ta'deel. In other words, it's not, uh, we did it in order to. But it, it says, but, and the result of that, of carrying this amana, right, is that, in order is what we would normally but here it means the result of carrying this amana and being oppressive and ignorant is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the hypocrites who outwardly say they're doing it but inwardly they're not doing it and the mushrikeen and the mushrikat those who reject tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا He's forgiving for those who, who attempt to carry it and they have shortcomings and failures and He's merciful for those who fulfill it from the awliya, the anbiya, the shuhada, the siddiqin, the sadiqin, the, all of those high-ranked people. So the amana, they differ on what that means. Some of the ulama said the amana is all the nawahi and the awamar that Allah has told us. In other words, all those things that he's told us to do and those things that he's prohib prohibited us from, this is the trust that Allah gave. And others say that the inward, there's a amana batina, which is tawheed, to have correct understanding of Allah and, and realize it. Ma'rifah. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No. Have ma'rifah. That there's no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the outward is to act in accordance with that understanding. So you have iman and a'mal. And this is the amana that we've been given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, Ala la imana liman la amana talahu. You have no iman if you have no trust. And they're related because the word iman comes from the same word as trust. So the trust is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a covenant that Allah has given us. It's a mitha and it's a It's a weighty covenant. If you renege on the covenant that Allah has given you, then punishments come. If Allah is merciful, they come in this world. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Ju'ila adabu ummati bi aydiha fi dunyaha. The punishment of my ummah is with their own hands in this world. They will actually, this is how Allah inflicts punishment on the Ummah that He loves 
Because they're not, they're not doing the covenant. So he puts it in their own hand. They give each other adab. They torture each other. So that they don't have to do this in the next world. Because this is the place of Tamhid. This is the place of Tazkiyah. This is where people are supposed to be purified. Now, one of the things that the angel said when Allah said, Inni da'irun fil abdi khalifa, the angel, and this is not ihtida, it's they're asking a question because they saw what the jinn did before the humans. If you're going to put another group of people that have free will, then they're going to shed blood and sow corruption in the earth. So the angel, the thing that troubled them was the shedding of blood and the sowing of corruption. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, you will have fusha with your Lord. In a sahih hadith, you will have fusha with your Lord as long as you haven't shed blood. On the Yom Qiyamah, you will have room with your Lord as long as you haven't taken a life. The Prophet ﷺ said, Don't be kuffar after I leave you, striking each other's necks. In other words, don't kill each other after I leave you. He asked Allah that the sword would never descend on his ummah fighting each other. And Allah said that, and this, this, this is... <laughs> From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is maktub alayna. Because the human being, if Allah suspended that, then he's basically suspending free will. Because human beings, when they don't purify themselves, they can become violent. And they can become extremely violent. This ahad, this covenant, doesn't, it's, it's not given to oppressors. This, this is a sacred trust that Allah has given us. And this is why, if you look at our Ummah right now, it's amazing. You have to marvel at the condition of the Ummah. Why, why our Ummah? Why? Well, look at us. Look at us as an Ummah. What are we doing? What have we done for this religion? And now we have people out there that are claiming to be acting on Islam, doing things that in the history of Islam, nobody has ever done, even the Khawarij in the early period didn't blow up tombs. I mean, even the dead people aren't safe from these people, let alone the living. It's amazing. Ahmed Zarruq slept peacefully since 1492 when he died. And nobody ever thought of going and disturbing his, his maqam. Imam Nod, one of the biggest of the ulama and awliya, from the aqtab, man adadi waliyan adantum bil harf. How can you have success if, if not, let alone the living, but you're attacking the greatest of the dead? It's amazing. But we have, unfortunately, some young people getting confused, some of them even going. I want to say something about our Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah bin Salam, who was a Jewish man, who became Muslim, he was a rabbi in, in Medina. He was the most learned of the Jews in Medina. When the Prophet ﷺ came, he went to see him. This is the first khutbah that the Prophet ﷺ gave in Medina. He went to see him, and, and he said, this is in a Tirmidhiya, if you imagine others, relate this. He said, when he saw him, Adam too, and the wajhahu, Laysa wajhakadda. I knew that this man did not have the face of a liar. This is what the Arabs call firasa. You know, it's the ability to see character in people's uh, faces. And the Arabs call the face, one of the names of the faces, a sahifa. It, it's like you're, you're, you're registered. It shows you. They say by 50, everybody has the face they deserve. You know, if you've lived a good life, people will still like looking at your face. If you lived a bad life, they'll have a hard time looking at you. Right? So, this is what he said. And then he said, The first thing I heard him say was, And the nas is for everybody, not just the believer. This is humanity. Ya yuhannas, afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am, wa sinu al-arham, 
وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخل الجنة بسلام Oh humanity spread peace he begins with peace spread peace feed food this is like now they call it the hierarchy of needs create security so that people feel safe and then provide their their basic needs feed the hungry and then maintain your blood ship, your blood uh, kinship bond because if you, if you maintain your blood bond that the society will be healthy it'll be safe it'll be secure when people take care of their own family because family is the foundation of civilization it's the foundation of every society whether it's primitive tribal societies or whether it's a complex society family is the foundation take care of your families the, the what we now call nuclear and the extended because the arham extends and then ultimately we're all from Banu Adam Kurukum in Adam وآدم التراب. So we share the رحم of Adam and Hawa عليهم السلام. So and then he said and give some night prayer. Pray at night when others are sleeping. Aisha said when every lover went to his beloved at night, the prophet went to his Lord. تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا. They get up at night from their madajah, from their places where they're sleeping. This is what this early community did. They used to get up and ask Allah forgiveness before dawn. Sahaba did this. This was their practice. And then he said, you will enter paradise in peace. He begins his khutbah with peace. He ends it with peace. After every prayer, what did he say? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Allahumma, anta salam, wa minka salam, wa ilayka ya'ud salam, hayina rabbana bis salam, tabaraka wa ta'alayta, ya dal jalali wa ikram. He would say, Oh Allah, you are salam, and from you is salam, and to you return salam. Let us live in salam. Let us live in peace. Abshu salam bainukum. The Prophet said, La tadkhul al jannata hatta tu'minu, wa la tu'minu hatta tahabu. You will not enter paradise until you believe, and you will not believe until you love one another. Ala adulukum ala shayin da fa'atumuhu tahabubtum. Abshu salam bainukum. Can't I tell you something that if you'll do it, you'll, that, that if you will love one another. In other words, you will believe, you will love one another, and therefore, right, the hidden conclusion, and therefore you will enter paradise. Can I tell you what to do? Bala ya Rasulullah, tell us what to do. Abshu salam bainukum. Spread peace amongst you. Spread peace amongst you. The Prophet wasallam said, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. The Prophet said, told us to spread peace. Why? Because this is what human beings want. In the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they have what they know. This is what Ibn Juzay and others say it means. Yadda'un here means what they wish, what they're desiring for, what they're calling out for. Salamun. Some of the Mufassirun say salam there is called a better. It's in a positive. In other words, it's the same as Maya Da'un. What they have is salam. That's why Allah calls to Daru Salam. The Jannah is finally the peace that we've all been looking for. Peace. And this is why the Mufassirun say when they first come into paradise, a word from a merciful Lord. The Prophet is the Rahmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was merciful with the believers because he gave him the means for peace. Now we have fitan. This is what we have. We have fitan. Fitan is when Muslims kill each other. That's fitna. And there's no other word for it. There's no other word for it. You don't call it jihad. 
Jihad is not fighting other Muslims. It's not killing other Muslims. You don't call that jihad. It's fitna. Now, the Prophet gave us some advice. He said to Allah, and this is a Sahih hadith. إِنَّهَا سَتْكُونُ فِتْنَةٌ يُكُونُ الْمُطَّجْعُ فِيهَا خَيْرًا مِنَ الْجَالِ There will be, and in another riwayah it says fitna, there will be this, this civil strife, calamity. It's better in that case to be lying down than to be sitting. وَالْجَالِسُ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْقَائِمِ And the jalis is better than the one standing. And the one standing is better than the one walking. And the one walking is better than the one running. Ya Rasulullah, ma ta'muruni. Qala man kanat lahu ibnun. Fa bi al-haq bi ibnihi. In other words, find some way of having a livelihood in your source. And just do that. Fa man kanat lahu ibnun. Fa bi al-haq bi ghanimi. If you have some sheep, go get your sheep. Wa man kanat lahu ard. Fa bi al-haq bi ardihi. And then he said, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَيْءٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ قَالَ فَلْيَعْمِلْ إِلَى سَيْفِهِ فَلْيَضْرِبْ بِحَدِّهِ عَلَى حَرَّةِ ثُمَّ لِيَنْجُوا مَا اسْتَطَعَ النَّجَاءِ Then let him break his weapon. And if he's able to be safe from that fitting, let him be safe. But don't kill people that say, لا إله إلا الله. Because if you shed blood of somebody that says, لا إله إلا الله, what will you do on the Yom Al-Qiyamah? Woe unto you on, on Yom Qiyam. Somebody that says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and you just remove them from the world. And this also includes human beings that aren't fighting you. It's not just a Muslim. Because La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and you're the Allah does, He doesn't prevent you from being good. Show them better. Show them goodness. Because that would make them want to be like you, to come into your religion. But if you treat them horribly, why would they want to become Muslim? For the first time in 1400 years, these Christians have been protected. They've been protected in the Muslim land. Rarely in, in Muslim history, even during the Armenian crisis in Turkey, but Balad Basha wrote letters, do not harm in, in dealing with the Armenian problem, because that were, that's a whole other discussion. But but Atasha, there are official documents that are recorded where he said, "Do make sure you do not harm other Christian communities in Ottoman lands." It was not about their religion, and the Ottomans took care of these people. This was our religion. This was our religion. Protecting these people. Haji Hali, a beautiful Turkish man who hid Armenians in his house for over half a year because he was worried that they would be killed during these, in 1915, when the Armenian crisis was happening in Turkey. There were Muslims that did, and there still are, trust me, there are Christians now being protected. By Muslims, because there are Muslims that know what this religion is. But we have young people now that have lost all sense of what this religion is. And they don't know. They didn't grow up with your grandparents. There's enough of you in here to know the religion of your grandparents. Those of you who are Muslims, you know the religion of your grandparents. You know the religion they taught you. This is not the religion that's being practiced today. These are people that have had no tarbiya. They have no love. He has no iman who has no love. In another hadith, the Prophet warned us about these people. And he said, and this is very important for people to understand. He said, you will deem your prayer insignificant when you see their prayer. And your fasting insignificant. They fast Mondays and Thursdays. Or every other day. 
And you will think your recitation of Quran is nothing by the amount of recitation that they do. And he said, يَقْرَأُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَا يُجَاوِزُ حَنَادِرُهُمْ In a riwayah حُرُوقَهُمْ لَا يُجَاوِزُ حَنَادِرُهُمْ In other words, it doesn't go down their throat. They don't understand the Quran. So they're, they're praying at night. They're doing tahajjud. Don't be fooled by piety. Don't be fooled by piety. They may even be sincere in their error. Ibn Qayyim, uh, as Josie talks about, people that are mukhlisun but not mukhlasun. <coughs> they have ikhlas in what they're doing, but they don't have tawfiq from Allah in their ikhlas. And those are dangerous people. Yamruquna min al-deen kama yamruq al-sahmu min al They will go out of this religion like an arrow goes out of the, the bow. Ibn Taymiyyah said about this, that the foundation of ibadah in our religion is prayer, fasting, and Quran recitation. And he said, that's what fools people. If you see these people and they're pious and doing all these things, you get fooled by them. And finally, the Prophet said, before the hour, the hour is always near. Since the time the Prophet came, the hour is near. He said, before the hour comes, there will be much indiscriminate killing. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, the Sahabi asked him, Ya Rasulullah, man harj? They didn't know that word. He said, al-qatl, murder. فَقَالَ بَعْضِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ نَقْتُلُ وَالْآنَ فِي الْعَامِ الْوَاحِدِ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ كَذَا وَكَذَا We're killing, uh, in, in our battles, we're killing mushrikeen. In other words, we have qatl now. What did the Prophet Sallallahu said? لَيْسَ بِقَتَلِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَكِمْ يَقْتُلُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا You're not killing mushrikeen, you're killing each other. And then he said, حَتَّ يَقْتُلُ الرَّجُلُ جَارَهُ a man will kill his own neighbor with an ammihi, faqarabatuhu. He'll kill his own cousin or somebody related to him. Faqarabab al qawm. Ya Rasulullah. Amma'na uqununa yawma idin. O Messenger of God, do we have our brains? Do we have our intellects? Do we have our brains in those days? They can't understand it. They're trying to figure out are they mad people? Have they gone crazy? Because what is the aqa that prevents you from doing evil? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَا They don't. جُنْزَعُ عُقُولُ أَكْتَرْ بِذَارِكَ الزَّمَانِ The people, the majority of people in those days won't have any brain. Just look around you on this planet. I'm telling you, look around you. People can't control their appetite. There's fatness everywhere. People can't control how they eat. People used to control. They ate in measured amounts. When they were full, they stopped eating. They can't do that now. We've got people that weigh just incredible amounts. Of, because why? The Aqab should tell you, stop, you're too fat. It's not healthy for you. But people lose their ability to constrain themselves. And this is what he said. And then he said something amazing. And everything he says is wonderful. What is he most of them will think that they, they're on something substantial. You know, they're, I'm doing the right thing. This is right. And he said, but they have nothing. Right? <coughs> so, I don't know. It seems clear to me. Maybe, I don't know. Everything seems clear to me. People say, I'm confused. I'm like, well, what's confusing? I mean, it's all, it's all there. But if, if you want to cherry pick and take out what you want, and I'm not denying jihad, I'm not denying harab al mu'minin, I'm not denying any of those verses in the Quran, I'm not denying, I've never denied jihad, nobody can ever find anywhere where I've denied jihad. But what is what's called tahqiq al manaq? What is jihad? When is jihad appropriate? And what types of jihad? Because even Ibn Taymiyyah said every action that is a qurba to Allah is jihad. It's a struggle. So when is military struggle appropriate? Look at the Muslim uh, countries now. You look at these pictures coming out of Syria, where a whole city is reduced to rubble. This this is the great jihad. This is jihad. This is this is what we want for our ummah. Seriously, 
This is what we want. This is a calamity. It's a, it's a calamity. And, and we have to pray for Allah. But if you want a metaphysical understanding of this, there are many verses in the Quran that will tell you exactly why this is happening. And that's another level. And that's a level Muslims don't want to look at. They don't want to look at how did this happen. How did this happen to us? We don't want to take responsibility of our own sinfulness, of our own disobedience to Allah, of our own distance from Allah as an ummah, as an ummah that has broken the covenant with Allah. We don't want to take responsibility. And so, the hell of my ummah is in this world. And our ummah is hell right now for a lot of people. May Allah restore our sanity and bring our intellects back to us. I hope you have your stuff to Allah. You would have come to recite it on the scene. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nistaghfiruhu. Alhamdulillah. Uh, one thing for all the young people, don't anybody be deluded by um, this type of propaganda. It's not Islam. It's simple as that. It's not Islam. It's something else. It's a perversion of Islam. And like the Prophet said, people will pervert his religion. And he said that the the Wuraba, the people, the, the strangers, which he said, blessed are the strangers. He said, who are the strangers? He said, Al-Ladina Yusrikuna Sunnati. They're the ones who rectify my way after people have corrupted it. So the way gets corrupted. It's been corrupted in the past. But the, but, but the poet's way is known. And his way is the way of Rahmah. And, and here's a, a basic criteria for you to understand this religion. Ibn Qayyim al Josia said, all of this religion is Rahmah. So if it goes to its opposite, it's not from Islam. All of this religion is justice. So if it goes to its opposite, it's not from Islam. All of this religion is maslaha, it's benefit. So if it goes to maqsada, if it goes to the opposite, then it's not from Islam. And he said all of this religion is hikmah, it's wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do in the circumstances you find yourself. Wisdom is when Omar suspends the had punishment during a time of, of dread. Suspend the hukum of Allah. He suspended the had because the hukum of Allah, the judgment of Allah in his ishtihad, at that moment, was that you should not apply the Hajj. Ibn Humam says, when you have widespread ignorance, the great Shafi'i scholar said, when you have widespread ignorance, the Hudud should be suspended. You shouldn't even implement Hajj punishment when Muslims are ignorant of their religion. Our ulama were wise people. The Ottomans did everything they could, could, could do to, to, to stop the Hajj punishment from being implemented. This is our religion. It's about Rahmah. It's about mercy. It's about empathy. To actually feel the pain of other people. You know, there's people that sit and watch these things, and they, there are no tears come to their eyes, like their hearts are dead. They're dead people. Malakum, what, what happened? You know, not to feel the pain and suffering of these people and want peace to come to them. To, to want war to continue is a sickness. This is a disease in people's hearts. And these warmongers are diseased people. On this side of the, of the divide and on the other side, they're sick. There are sick people in this civilization that want to bomb and destroy people. We need to reach out to people to, to save those that can be saved, to help those that can be saved, to call them back to their own humanity. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد انك قلت وقولك الحق ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان والايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون الله اقيموا الصلاه ان شاء الله لذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى